stream was brought to you by Hustlers Kung Fu University, where your real financial education begins. We suggest that you take advantage of the basic money management course and 50% off with the promo code MONEY. So let's get into this wonderful bean footage. You know, I've been thinking. I've been thinking quite a bit about how to live your best financial life, steps you need to take for a happy financial life. This stuff should be taught in schools. This should be right along with math and science and history and English. And it's not. So how does one live their best financial life? How does one make the money that they need to be happy? The first step is deciding what type of life you want to live. That is key. That is a big, big part of it. Because essentially these steps are, first of all, you need to figure out what type of life you want to live. And then once you figure out what type of life you want to live, then you figure out an economic vehicle to support that lifestyle. We do it in reverse. We go out and we live life and we hope for money to come in. A lot of people just don't plan on living their best financial life. And one of the things is you, you can't become prey to the American indoctrination of the credit card loan system. So I'm going to give you a few guidance points here and a few suggestions. And this is something that if you have children, you need to talk to them tonight. You need to sit little Johnny down, little Susie down and say, look, I got something I need to tell you. And this is going to impact you for the rest of your life. This is going to. Um, cast a shadow over everything that you do. Is very, very important. So what you want to do is get your children in the habit of saving a large percent of whatever money they make. This is like eating. Typically, your eating habits are formed when you're a kid. So if your parents are going out buying you junk food and stuff, more than likely you're going to be fat or obese. This stuff starts in childhood. So typically, people who remain naturally slim, their parents didn't cake them up or they had a pretty good diet. So your financial diet is very similar to your food diet. So if you want to have a fat bank account, you need to feed it good stuff. So one of the things you got to understand is you need to save money. You need to manage money much, much better. Uh, like one of the guidance points I would give you, your name's Carl and you're going to marry uh, Jennifer and you and Jennifer need to have this talk while you're, you know, in the early stages of planning your marriage. It's like, look, this is what we're going to do. We're going to live on the largest income, which is mine. And we're going to bank your income and we're going to retire all this debt we have. This is the template for financial happiness. This is the template for you being able to pay cash for your house, to pay cash for cars, to have cash to start up a business. This is, you know, because I look at my level of happiness and when I really started getting happy, really happy was not at 70,000 because it was like happiness peaks after 70,000. My happiness came in at 150 200k and why did my why did i get happy i had freedom i had a job that i loved i had a job that no one clocked me on this job no one was like hey glendon you weren't in your office hey glendon i caught i i had no one checking for me like that so i was personally free I was economically free 
and I had a lot of freedom. Like if I wanted to go to lunch with somebody in the middle of the day, I could take a two hour lunch. So this is the lifestyle that I got used to very shortly after I exited the boarding house. So freedom is a big, big part of happiness because if you can become economically free and personally free at the same time, boy, I'm here to tell you, that is some cool, cool stuff. To be able to come and go as you please. To, you know, if I wanted to take a vacation, I could just, like, if I didn't have a pending project, I could just go. I didn't have to ask anybody. It's like, hey, you know, I'm going to be gone for a week or two. Hey, deuces, I'm out. So a big part of this is economics and how you manage your money. And how you set up the things that you want to do. And no one ever, no one sits you down and tells you that this is a choice. This is an economic choice. What you decide to spend your money on is a choice. And the sooner, you know, because this put me in a situation, because like, you know, I told you the story. I had a really good deal. I went out and paid cash for a brand new BMW 540i. I got into paying cash for cars once I started making money. Uh, my first car I financed, and my second car I financed. My third car I paid cash for. And my first car I kept for a, for like 10 years. Really rode the wheels off of it. And... Part of this economic choice, because one of the things you're seeing is you have many people who are determining their lifestyle by their wallet. They're not imagining or putting together a lifestyle independent of their wallet. These are my circumstances. These are my means. This is where I'm at. This is how I'm going to live. This is what a lot of people do. That's not the way to do it. Like, you know, I have a friend who lives in California. He loves living in California. And he has a beach house. He works in the film industry. So what he did is got himself a income, a job, because I think he makes like half a million a year working in the film industry, that enables him to support the lifestyle he wants to live. Because, you know, he was just like, we're in the military together. And he was like, man, I want to live in California. I want to live in the beach house. He was saying this in the 80s. He had a plan. He had a desire. So he got the military. He went to California. And then he got into the movie industry. He started making that long cheese. Bought himself a beach house. Every morning, he runs on the beach. That's the lifestyle that he wanted. So he knew the lifestyle that he wanted first. This is very, very pivotal and very, very important. That you know this. So to be financially happy isn't about being a millionaire. Because I reached financial happiness long before the millionaire, you know, the millionaire tag got labeled to me. I mean, I was happy as hell in that board, you know, in that in that house in East Point. I didn't own the house, but I I mean, you know, I could do what I wanted when I wanted. There was always money in the bank for me to get what I wanted. You know, I wasn't uh, a devil may care type of person to go out and just spend money. But I was in a situation where I didn't have to look at price tags if I didn't want to. And there, there's a certain joy that comes when you can go out and buy what you really, really want. Now, I'm not talking about shopping therapy. There's a lot of people getting to shopping therapy where they just go out and they're shopped because spending money feels good. And then they come home and they put the stuff in the closet and they never wear it. I'm not talking about that. I am talking about making purchases. Like, you know, I was talking about the guy who had the Corvette and he sold the Corvette to buy a truck. I bought a BMW X5M. 600 horsepower, it zoomed, 
I didn't. I, I, I'm not. I'm not selling that to buy a truck because I really wanted it. And the cars I have in my garage, I really like them. I enjoy them, and I really wanted them. So a lot of people who go out and buy these things, they don't really know themselves well enough to get what they want. So this is why they be feeling um, a sense of desperation. All right. Josh W., how do you feel about network marketing? Once again, this is a good question for this conversation. How do you feel about network marketing? Do you enjoy it? Does it make you happy? Do you like the people? Uh, I'll tell the story of when I was a reseller and I was in the reseller niche, how I grew to hate the crowd of people because they were just pathologically cheap, stingy, petty. I just hated it. So I took my ball and I went home. I got out of it. So whenever you're going to talk about network marketing, insurance, do you like the industry? When I was selling office furniture, I love that. Got to go to these nice showrooms, got to parade people around, got the Corporate American Express. I was living life. I, it was fun. And because it was fun and I enjoyed it, that's why I was successful at it. So don't get into something like, you know, and if you don't really know what makes you happy, experiment. This is why I tell all young people to go out and travel and do as make as many experiments as possible. Engineer life skills. I just discussed this with my family. My girl's a teacher, and the reason they don't teach financial literacy in school is because the teachers cannot do math. Wow. What's up, Anthony? You're going to have to refresh. Uh, turf, frugality, and stockpiling the substantial nest egg is vital. Yes, it is. Cosmo, yeah, I don't believe that maximum happiness is a 70K. Not enough funds to pay bills and invest at that point. Uh, BK Pro, all about mindset. Opulence as excellence. I like that name. Personal economics today is nothing to play with. I just read an article titled, Las Vegas bans homeless people from sleeping on the street. It's illegal if beds are available at shelters. Man, that's a shopping addiction. Miles King, good afternoon, Mr. Glendon. Quick question. When I take your training courses, do I have unlimited accesses to the courses? You have unlimited access. Once you buy a course and you pay for it, it's yours forever. So, you know, let's let's talk about some more steps. Because first of all, if you are 30, 35, 40 years old, you may be already inst indoctrinated with the American credit system syndrome. And the American credit system syndrome is not good for your wallet. It is not good for your financial happiness because it keeps you on this little treadmill. It keeps you out here just um, steadily going for stuff. Like, you know, like this has happened to me with Amazon. I was a really big shopper on Amazon. I was buying a lot of stuff for business and I realized a lot of stuff was just cheap. It was really cheap and not really worth the money. So my Amazon shopping, I'm not a prime member anymore. I let my prime account go. I, I rarely get stuff from Amazon. It's kind of rare. I actually shop on other websites more than I do Amazon. And, you know, the shopping thing, you have got to shop for value. If you want to pay 
$15,000 for your living room suit, you like it, you love it, do it. Because more than likely, you pay that kind of money for a living room suit, it's going to stand up. You're going to have that for years and years, like uh, this sofa back here. I got this sofa from Macy's. I got a sofa and a chair about 11 years ago. And it was a closeout deal. I wish I had bought this second chair, but it was a closeout deal. This sofa and the chair I got for $3,500, and it was 50% off. It was 50% off. It was another discount. And the thing is, is we're stood the test of time. All of the stuff, I mean, the sofa, it still looks good. 10 years old. So you should be making practical investments because uh, one of the things I know from being in the furniture business is that people used to buy furniture for value, durability, People don't shop that way anymore. They go to rooms to go and get disposable furniture. So every time they move, they could, you know, they want it cheap. So every time they move, they can go out and buy it again and not make these investments. Like Baker Furniture. Baker Furniture is designed to last for generations. You could take it apart. You could recover it. And this is where you should be with your purchases. You should be buying on value. Supercar Customs. I don't buy cars cash, but I buy them at the right price with fair interest. I'm never upside down when it's time to sell. That's something that's pretty remarkable because a lot of people are instantly upside down the minute they drive off the lot. Sure thing, Miles. What's up, IJ? Uh, the name is credit can become a huge addiction. I remember when I got first few cards, I became so addicted and think about the consequences of repayment. It feels like magical money. And this is why I call it the American credit addiction, because we're all indoctrinated at a very early age because they're sending credit cards to 16 year olds. Now it used to be, you couldn't get a credit card unless you were 18. Uh, you know, years ago I drove for Uber for about six weeks so I could write a book on how to make money with Uber. And one of my passengers was this kid with his own credit card. He had ordered an Uber to pick this girl out to go to the movies. I thought it was a baller move because he was a very interesting 16 year old kid. Very interesting. But he had a credit card. So they're giving credit cards to 16 year olds who don't have jobs. So this is to get that hook in your mouth to get you leveraged, to get you um, situated, to get you addicted. I'm frugal by nature, also I do enjoy the finer things in life, hence why I make strategic purchases. Because, you know, because the thing is with money, you can buy quality. And this is one of the things that, you know, people with money do, who are, who have class. Because money does not give you class. Class is an immutable attribute to your personality. You ever walk in someone's house and it was tastefully decorated and the person had a certain manner about themselves and you, they just ooze class. You know, when they, you put drinks down, they were on coasters. They're just, just, just a certain level of class. And class will drive you to make sensible purchases. No keeping up with the Joneses. You're just living your life. You're living your best, happy financial life. Because one of the reasons, you know, most marriages end in divorce because of financial problems. Most. And when I say financial problems, it could go both ways. It could be not enough money or it could be too much money. I know someone that got divorced because her husband, he, had, he, he made a lot of money. He was a millionaire. And he had, uh, he had three lives. He had his wife and he had two other chicks in condos because to do that enough money, he bought this chick, these chick, these, these two extra chicks 
condos and cars. And she found out about that he had these because he, he traveled a lot, so he said. And he would spend one week with her. He spent one week with this other chick. He spent another week with this other chick. And that's why she got divorced because, you know, they didn't have an open relationship. And, um, you know, she, she, she said, she remember she told me, she said, I didn't realize he made that much money. Because my house, she said, we never suffered. Whenever I asked for money or I needed money, it was there. The house is paid for. The cars are paid for. I didn't know he had that kind of money. So she divorced him because he was cheating because he had so much money. Which is, you know, and I, I kind of like, were you unhappy? Because I was just sitting there like, because every time I saw her, she seemed to be happy. And she's like, well, I was happy until I found this out. So her happiness changed when she found out that he was doing something strange. It's very interesting. But the lack of money, you know, you know, and I should say the lack of proper money management, because let's say you and your girl both make minimum wage. You got to employ extreme financial discipline at that stage. That's what you got to do. You can't ball out. You can't be eating out all the time. This is one of the things. BK Pro, I just finished paying off my car early this year after six years. I regret it buying a new vehicle after about four months or two repayments. Turf, with the exception of my Audi, I purchased a ran in my vehicles with cash. Good for you. Malika Harris, I was never in that position where I had to do that. Uh, I was never in the position where I had to. I've never had sizable credit card debt or I've just never been in that situation. So I don't know what to tell you on that. God is no, the problem wasn't too much money. The problem was too much. <laughs> It was a, he was a, he was a, I, I, I still know this dude. He's still doing what he was doing. He still got, cause I think he has like four of them. Um, but once again, you know, with debt, let's talk about debt. Debt is going to kill your financial happiness. So as a person who's never incurred student loan debt, I've never had big credit card debt. I've not had car payments. Only thing I've had is a mortgage here and there, and I never bought the most house I could, so that really didn't like. You know, I was watching this uh, recommendation because you know in Boise, Iowa, right now, one bedroom apartments are one thousand dollars, and two bedrooms are thirteen, fourteen hundred. And uh, this couple moved from a house where they were paying fourteen hundred to an apartment to save money. Within two years, the apartment was the same price as the house they moved out of into the apartments to save money. This is Boise, Idaho. And, you know, we're talking about, you know, the max that you should allocate for rent or a mortgage is 30% of your income. I don't spend 30% of my income. I mean, if I was spending 30% of my income, I'd be in the mansion. I'm talking about a gated mansion with fountains and stuff. And I, I just, that's just something I don't want. If I wanted it, I would get it. And this is another key to financial happiness. The ability to get what you truly want. Not what you kind of sort of want. You know, there's this thing. And everybody's got this thing or something that they've looked at for years. And they're like, I want that. And when they get it, they'll be happy. I'm talking about those kind of wants, not these tertiary wants, not these um, impulse wants. You know, like when I want, I, I had an impulse. I wanted to move to California. I wanted to live on Manhattan Beach. And I had another impulse. I wanted to live in the high rise. That may still happen. But 
one of the things I know since I know me and I have greater self-awareness is I will test something before I commit to it. You can test on some of these wants, you know, a certain kind of car you want, rent it and see if you like it. Because, I, you know, someone in the comments just talked about after four payments, they regretted buying this car. Uh, typically, there's a lot of people who get in these situations that shortly after they make that purchase, they regret it. They're no longer happy. They're like, I wish I hadn't did this. All right, Royston. Excalibur, I'm getting ready to pay my car off. I don't regret buying it. Well, I won't be financing another car. Excellent. So this is something else, too. Once again, for financial happiness, you got to manage your debt loads because like I said, debt's going to kill your financial happiness. Debt is going to create stress, worry. It's going to keep you up at night. It's going to freak you out. You lose your job. Debt creates a lot of stress. So one of the things I recommend is do not go into bad debt. Now, what is bad debt? Car payments are bad debt. Credit card payments for balances is bad debt for just going out. You don't go into bad debt. You should use your personal credit and you should use your business credit to buy assets that throw off cash. That's how you should use your credit. You shouldn't use your credit to go to Best Buy and get a computer. Unless you're getting that computer and that computer is going to help you make some money. That would be an example of good debt. Uh, when I built my first business credit profile before they changed everything because you can't do this anything. Literally in six months, I went from nothing to a Home Depot credit card with a $10,000 limit. No PG. It was through G Capital. Now, they still have these no PG products, but your company needs to be making two or three million dollars a year. You need to have financials and tax returns and stuff. You know, you can send that in that you can still play that game. But I did that in six months. I have literally half a million dollars in business credit in six months. That's something that you just can't do today because they changed all the rules. But I had a Staples card, which they gave me $750 credit limit immediately. And I worked that bad boy up to 15000 And I bought computers for the business. Paid them off pretty quickly. But once again, you got to understand the difference between bad debt and good debt. A mortgage could be considered good debt because a mortgage gives you a lot of options. Number one, no one's going to raise your rent unless you get an adjustable mortgage, which is insane. So you buy this house and you get a mortgage... 1250 bucks, 30 years fixed. It, you know, eventually what's going to happen is you'll be able to rent that house out for more than what you're paying on that mortgage. I know someone who bought this townhouse for $180,000. Now the townhouse is worth $430,000 and he rents it for like damn near $4,000 a month. But his mortgage was like 1200 so, you know, once again, know the differences between good debt and bad debt. Anthony Johnson, GD, you think it's uh, me taking a trip to China to find the mansion for my e-commerce business is best opposed to buying sight unseen? Anthony Johnson, I would consider that a good trip. I would consider that a good way to do it. Because you got to build relationships with these people. If you get in the plane, go over there, meet with them, they're going to treat you better, and they're probably going to give you better pricing. Uh, Jay, Glendon, would you move to another state to save money and use your TSP to pay off your debt? What is TSP? Uh, this time I'm going to answer that question. The way that I designed my life is, 
I can live anywhere in the country, including California and New York, if I wanted to. I would not, I've not been in a position where I've had to move for a job. Because I, I met someone that um, moved here from Seattle for a job. I don't know what that looks like. I don't know what that feels like. So for me to uproot my life, to go make some money is a foreign concept. And this comes back to happiness. The way that I design my life is I can live wherever I want and have enough money to live in style and comfort wherever I want to live. That's the way I design my life. So I don't know about moving to another state to save money or moving in with a roommate. This isn't the way that I designed my life. And this is the core of what I'm talking to you guys about it. Oh, uh, I mean, this is what a lot of people who are deep in e-commerce do. They go to China and they build these relationships. BK Pro, I will be full. I will, I will buy with full cash. The new calling field wore off quick once these payments started. Black Caesar, exactly. How did you grow your Home Depot credit card from 10k to 100k in six months? I used the credit card to buy at public storage, and I would spend ten thousand dollars sometimes once a month or twice a month, and they just kept upping the limit till I got to 100k. Uh, what they will do with business credit, when they give you credit limit increases with business credit, they be jumping. They be jumping you cuz I was like cuz I was at the auction one day and I was like I got $50,000 in my pocket cuz I had that credit card on me. And I had my credit cards cuz I had a, probably about $100,000 worth of credit on me and I had $5,000 cash. But public storage, it would let you use credit cards to pay for units. And then once I got smart, I started using the reward card. Military, oh, I don't have a military retirement plan. I was only in the military six years. I didn't. I didn't retire. I didn't have any injuries, so I don't get any retirement money. I get nothing. You know, uh, right, Israel, being very intentional in design, because like I said, I don't know what it's like to take a job in another state to... Um, I don't know what that feels like. Because the way, and this is, you, you're going to have to design your life. Because one of the things that I did once I got out the storage auction business is, you know, Atlanta traffic is heinous. And I said, I want to create a situation where I don't have to drive in traffic. So this is why I came to the internet. This is why I became a digital citizen. This was all very, very intentional. I have not had a commute since I've been doing this. I've been working from home. This was, and you're going to have to design your life before you get your money. Because when you intentionally design your life, then you create an economic vehicle to support that intention. This is where the happiness flows into. Because I'm telling you, um, one of the things that I looked upon is I'm very much a unicorn. I have a few friends that, you know, I'll call them up for lunch. We can hang out for lunch because they have their own businesses. But the average person doesn't have that. The average person can't take off. And another situation that uh, I found to be very interesting. A lot of these chicks were talking about, you know, for I'm going to do disruptive male stuff. They couldn't go out during the week. They could only go out on the weekend. I'm like, you get off. You have some time after work. Correct. A lot of them didn't have time after work. They went to work. They, they were in school. They had a second job. And 
part of this is you want to design your life before you start living it. Like this internet thing was very intentional because I knew the power of the internet. I knew the power, I mean, made great money on eBay, made great money on Amazon. So I knew that I could make a lot of money online and I just had to figure out how to do it in my name only, which is one of the biggest things. M. Ruff, how to hide income from child support. Create your own business. I did not have to ask for credit limit increases. I was spending a lot of money. The more I spent, the more they jacked up my credit limit. Yeah, public storage lets you pay for auctions with a credit card. Public storage, uh, SureGuard used to. Oftentimes, individuals allow life to happen to them. You must harness the reins and control every aspect of it. Yeah, public storage. Some of the, you know, just ask. Uh, store all, if you ask, if they knew you, they would let you use a credit card. And this is how I got into getting, like, you know, massive rewards. Because I stopped using the Home Depot credit card, and I got a reward credit card. Because the Home Depot credit card did not give you rewards. Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't know. Because once again, I don't know what's going on in the auction world. I don't do that. I haven't done it in 10 years. But I know back then, that's what you could do. Engineer life skills. Facts. You have to find a business that fits your ideal lifestyle. It automatically answers what kind of business do I start question. And that's, that's what I keep telling people because when it, people ask me, is this a good business? And they, I'll push back and like, do you like it? Because I can tell you, when I was doing, uh, making eight, you know, storage auction and reseller stuff, when I started to hate the people, hate the audience, it was miserable. And I was making great money, but it was miserable. And I was like, I'm taking my ball and I'm going to go in another direction. I'm about to lose these jokers. They were coming on the channel talking about, oh, good, and I'm here for your free information. I'll never pay you. Leaving that in the comments. Like, really? You're trolling overtime, bro. So, once again, happiness, how to live your best financial life, it all starts with personal choices. Like, you know, the people around here, they pay cash for these houses. These are multi-million dollar houses. They're living within their means. And this is why, you know, when I hear about the millionaire next door, and I hear about all of these, quote, millionaires that drive like a, a Subaru Impreza. Part of that, I believe, is that some people are uncomfortable with wealth. If, because essentially you're going to drive a Honda because you worried about what people are going to think about you if you get a better car. And I've heard that expressed that I'll, I'll drive a Honda because I don't want people to think that I think that I'm better than them or I, I have all of this other stuff, right? And once again, one of the things is about getting money and having economic freedom is it gives you personal freedom to live your life the way you want to, to do what you want to, to enjoy life, to have a decent life. And one of the things that you guys have got to understand is it all starts with a choice. And I'm going to recommend this book, The Power of Your Subconscious Mind. Start imprinting abundance traits on your subconscious mind today. Because I saw a lot of this stuff happening, and I saw it happen before it happened. Tiffany, I know you hate the word luck, but were you lucky enough to catch the wave of storage auctions? 
I did storage auctions 10 years before the shows come on. That had nothing to do with luck. Uh, you know how I got in the storage auction business? It was twofold. First of all, uh, one of my clients, JDA, they said, if you sell our office furniture, we'll buy new office furniture from you because none of the other salespeople would agree to that. So I ended up selling their office furniture and making like 150 k because they gave me half of whatever I sold and they bought the new furniture from me. So I made money coming back and forth. Then after I left business environments, I started selling new furniture and I only made after all expenses and stuff was done and I only made 35 K. I was not happy. And I remember how profitable you stuff was. So I started looking in the paper of how I could get my hands on a bunch of used stuff. I started looking for used furniture. Then I started finding all this other stuff. So it was very intentional how I got into the storage auction business. Luck had nothing to do with it. I didn't happen to be like in my storage unit like, hey, what are these guys doing here? What are you guys doing? You're having an auction? That looks interesting. No. I intentionally looked for a way to buy used stuff at a discount to resell. So luck had nothing to do with it. Uh, I want you folks to get the mind luck, you know, because see, when you say luck, you let yourself off the hook. I got to get lucky to do that. Like uh, the other night when Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks beat um, the 49ers. Wasn't luck. It's preparation and preparedness. That's why they won. Wasn't luck. Let that luck shit go, man. You know, because essentially when you deploy luck, you're saying that I'm not good enough. I don't have the talent. I can't make this thing happen. Oh, Diana's Orchards. Luck, laboring under correct knowledge. I mean, that's funny. Engineering life skills. Each business model is good for a certain income range or breakdown once you get to the top of that range. Then you have to redesign your lifestyle. All right, DL. Opportunity and preparation. Because once again, you know, the, the whole American economy is predicated on debt. The way that we get cash, cash is printed up to offset debt. And it, it's an American syndrome that you got to sidestep. Because if you never get on that credit card syndrome, like, you know, in the military, I remember I got my first credit card. I got a Citibank credit card with a $1,500 limit. And I got a Citibank credit card with a, FA, no, a Citibank and a First Union credit card with a $1,500 limit. I went crazy. I was just like, swipe, 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 swipe. I got money, right? And then when that bill came in and I had to start paying that off, that didn't feel so good. Spending money felt great. Like, put my credit card down. And, you know, next thing you know, literally in literally two months, I had $3,000 worth of debt. And I had to pay that off. And I stopped having additional money. My money got a little tight because I had all these bills. I had a car payment. I had car insurance. I was just a E4 in the military. It was taking my one complete check and half of another check. So I only had 25% of my income to do stuff with. And this is one of the things that you, you've got to understand that when you have debt, debt kills everything. Let's say you make $50,000 a year. You're bringing home about um, $3,000 a month. And you've got $3,000 worth of bills. You can't do nothing. Your life is so tight. James Stanman, hard work and preparation makes you lucky. Absolutely. 
Black Caesar, luck fosters no accountability of self-determination. Uh, you got to look at your whole credit report. Tie, tying your skill set with a need. There's no, really no trend in supply and demand has always been. Pretty much. Pretty much. They've printed at least $8 billion this year alone. Good Lord. And turf, this is why I keep telling people, if you're in economic turmoil, start a service business. The service industry is omnipresent. You must uh, merely select what service you're willing to provide. Simple mathematics. Like, everybody around here has a lawn service. Nobody around here cuts their own grass. No one. Service business. I mean, service businesses are the way for you to come up or a way. And, you know, another thing for financial happiness. You got to understand the more money concept. Uh, many people try to fulfill everything they can out of their, their current income. I saw this comment. I didn't answer it. About... How to get a hundred thousand dollar credit? You know, it's like, you know, if you could teach me how to get a hundred thousand dollar credit limit while making fifteen thousand dollars a year, that's just stupid. You don't need a hundred thousand dollar credit card with making fifteen thousand dollars a year. You don't have the ability to repay it if you use it. I mean, those days are over. You know, where grandma has like one hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand dollars in credit. And grandma on Social Security, those days are over. Uh, they very much take in your account your ability to repay to set your credit limit. There are people out there with 750, 800 credit scores, and they only have maybe $20,000 in credit cards because that's their, that's their exposure level but based on their income. And they're not going to get any more credit based on their income. And a lot of people don't understand that because they, you know, they used to grandma. Diana's origins. I love when people go to Las Vegas thinking they're going to get lucky with no strategy of when to quit and get out while the getting's good. Grant Barnes, if you don't have money, you have time. That's true. William Johnson, paying off all credit cards monthly helped me clearly realize how much I'm spending monthly and what I need to do to cut back on spending. Yeah, I treat my credit cards like debit cards. I pay them off as I use them. I don't even wait to the statement. And this is something else that's funny. They used to let you overpay credit cards. Uh, my Chase, American Express will still let you do it, but Chase will not. And it is funny because like you, this is what some people would do. Like if they wanted to buy a card, their credit card, they would go get the loan in their name and they would take the money and put it on the credit card and use the credit card to buy the car to get the points. If you got those kind of credit limits, and some people do, So one, one of the big things is you got to understand you're going to need more money. Uh, when I start this personal finance channel, which probably will be the day, uh, one of the things that you guys are going to realize is I'm going to break it down by income level. Because one of the things is you got a lot of personal finance channels that put out generalized advice like the, uh, fire, the fire movement. I saw a couple that retired in eight years he was making $100,000 a year. She was making 70 and they both got part-time jobs. You, you know, you could do fire at 170. You could do fire at 200K. You could do fire at 300K. You can't do fire at 30K. 
You can't do the fire at 50K unless <clears throat> you're living with somebody and you don't have rent and you don't have a car payment. And that's going to be iffy. Pumping numbers. I agree. 10. Don't concentrate on the platform. Concentrate on finding the need and providing max value in the most efficient way. You know, I'm here to tell you that if you are a young person and you're beginning your economic life, your financial life, you probably want to start a service business quicker than getting a job. Now, you got many people out here who's like, hey, you know, everyone's not suited to run a business. I would disagree, and I'm going to tell you why. The number of kids in high school making six and seven figures is epidemic. They're all on YouTube sharing information. This one guy, he's 18. His name is, this is where I got the Wi-Fi bread thing. He's 18 year old. He just bought his first rental property. You said he could have paid cash, but he didn't want to use all his cash for the property. So he went out and got a loan and used his father as a co-signer. 18 years old, bought his first rental property. Has a e-commerce business that he started when he was in high school. You're never going to be able to get this guy to get, quote, a job making 30, 40, 50 K. He, he, he is, no, he's no longer suited for that world. There's no way he's going to be able to do that. Like, um, someone asked me what, you know, if someone offered me a million dollar year job, would I take it? And I was like, no, I didn't even think about it. Because that job, me and all your job, I'm going to get taxed to death and there's going to be a lot of handcuffs. Yeah, the oil fields, man. Like, once again, you know, you got to, it's about providing information. And it's about taking the information and using it. Because right now, like I said, if you are, even if you are felon, you could go to the oil fields and make six figures. But it depends upon your work ethic and it depends upon your personality and your ability to network. Because a lot of people out here don't understand that there, there's opportunities. And, you know, part of this is you, you need to have a lifestyle of in design and intent. You need to design your lifestyle with a certain intention. And this is one of the things that you should do if you want financial happiness. Because once you define the lifestyle that will make you happy, then you get the money. Then, you know, happiness is just automatic because you're doing what you want. You're living the way that you want. And you have the money that you want. Oh, the company, man, it's a good movie. Erica Williams, they don't have skills or common sense to work multiple jobs. Yeah, I'm kind of seeing that with um, the the whole sugar baby thing. A lot of these girls are in dire straits, and they should have two or three jobs, and they just don't. They get on these websites looking for, you know, everyone's looking for a billionaire, and there's only like 2,600 of them in the world. Navy Federal does what? How do you get out of a bad car loan that you're spending too much for without crippling your credit? You, uh, Shimra, you're going to have to pay it off. The only way you're going to do that without crippling your, your credit is to pay it off or to sell it and get from under it. That's it. Because one of the things is with financial happiness is... It's about choices. It's about making the proper choices to create the happiness. Because 
you know, when you go out and you spend a lot of money on something that doesn't provide long-term value or happiness, you're going to have buyer's remorse. Like the guy with the Corvette, he had buyer's remorse a few months after he bought the car because it didn't fit in with the crowd that he was in. And it, that, that thing was so funny because there's another guy in the resale community, community. He drives like this BMW i8 and people were like, hey, he should learn this lesson. The cheap pathology mindset has become a click. It has become um, a herd, a coat, a coat of cheapness. Because even people with the money, they still feel that they should go cheap and they should not buy luxury items or live in a certain lifestyle because of how people, because they care how people, what people think about them. I'm a person, I don't really care what you think about me. What your opinion of me is none of my business. I really don't care. It, it doesn't really factor into my life or my happiness. Royston can't stand the lazy helper. There's a lot of them out there. All right, Righteous Media Group. So, you know, it's all about designing your life. You know, and I'll, I'll talk more about this in the future. Because it's all on you to figure out how you want to live. Like, if you're a man and you want to get married and you want to have a wife and you want to have kids, it's up to you to see that. And I'm going to give you a little information here. First of all, I don't believe that I would have a grown woman living up in my house not working. They ain't happening. So, you know, if you want to have kids... You need to, one, give this woman, say, look, this, give her a mission. This is your mission. We're going to live off my income, and we're going to put it into a joint account with both our names on it, and we're going to use that money for investments only. We're going to use that money to retire debt really quickly because even if you're making $33,000 a year, and you lived on one income, which means you're not going to live in the best neighborhood. You're not going to drive the best cars. And you took that other 2500 bucks per month to retire debt. You get out of debt so quick. So that, that's going to be the first thing. It's like we're going to get out of debt. We're going to use your money to get out of debt. Then we're going to keep saving your money and all your raises to buy investments. We're either going to get in the stock market. We're going to get in the real estate market. We're going to go out and buy cash. Houses cash. And, you know, after like, you know, like say three or four years, you buy your first rental property. Guess what? You now have additional income that's coming in. You got, you know, with average rents, you got twelve to $20,000 a year now coming in from that first rental property. Keep saving her money. Now you'll be able to buy another rental property. You know, there's just so many ways to do it. Seems to me many of these young ladies are waiting a leprechaun. Locks the chef and designing your lifestyle. Did you start the list with what you didn't want? No, I started the list with what I wanted. Like this this current lifestyle. I came out the storage auction business and I was like, I don't want to be in Atlanta traffic. I used to love the storage auction business, but I hated the traffic because like if you know the difference is if it started raining and people start having accidents. It could take you another hour to get somewhere. And I hated that. So I haven't been in traffic. So I was like, part of this is I want to create a lifestyle for myself where I could earn a lot of money and not be in traffic. And that was on my list of goals. So if you don't want to deal with traffic and you want to start an internet business, you know, write that down. Otis Harris, I have a degree in sociology. I'm 37, been working in the school system. I want to change careers to make more money. What are your suggestions? Start a service business. Keep your job and start a service business on the side to get your money up, to get your, to buy your freedom money. Because in buying your freedom is you're buying back your time. You work in the school system. So certain hours per day are already accounted for. 
that you can't use for nothing else. So you got to get yourself some money, uh, a service business, a war chest, so you can buy back your time so you can free yourself. This is one of the critical things that you should do. All right. So hopefully. On the other hand, can't marry a do nothing woman. Times have changed. Women are not staying home with seven kids anymore. She has to do something. I agree. Pretty much. Pretty much. All right, this live stream was brought to you by Hustlers Kung Fu University, where you can currently get any course for 50% off. I suggest you get the money management course, the, uh, the basics of finance and wealth development and use the promo code money. Hopefully you guys have a good day. I will see.